What's happening, friends? Hello, welcome to another edition of On Time with me, Bobby Bones. I am your host, Bobby Bones. I have been described, for those of you that don't know me, as he's what you get if you were to take Clay Aiken and Weezer and put them together and subtract all the talent. That's me. And I'm, I'm no treat by myself. That's probably not why you're watching this, but I've got some amazing people stopping by the show. We have my friend Gary LaVox of Rascal Flat stopping by. He's going to play us a song. We also have new artist Lainey Wilson stopping by. She's going to play some music, too. She's also on the way to becoming a big old star. So we have music. We have guests. We're going to play some games. You guys can also write questions in the box, and I'll ask some of them, too. So, And if you're really lucky, I'll show you guys my third nipple. See? You'll even learn some things about me. But before we get to our guests, I always like to kick things off with the shortest monologue in all the land. Just wham, bam, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the joke, ma'am. It's three quick jokes that we've appropriately titled Three Jokes for the Folks. Here we go. Joke number one. Scientists are warning us that it's time to bust out the earplugs as trillions of cicadas are emerging from their 17-year-long hibernation to mate. 17 years, that's not so bad. Listen, it's been 41 for me. I haven't mated yet. You don't see me swarming all over the place. See, I'm saving that for my wedding night. That's a sexy wink. Moving on to joke number two. It's being reported in Canada that fans are being contacted by profiles pretending to be Chad Kroger, the lead singer of Nickelback. Some have said the fake profile has asked them for money in the form of Bitcoin or iTunes gift cards. As if Nickelback fans didn't have it rough enough already. Wait till they realize it is actually Chad Kroger of Nickelback. That's right. And finally, joke number three, Target announced they will stop the sale of Pokemon cards after a man pulled a gun during a fight over trading cards in their parking lot. They described the event as the nerdiest felony in the history of American crime. He actually asked the police, can I have my mommy come pick me up from jail? Gotta love America. The only place where it's easy to buy a gun in the store, but impossible to buy Pokemon cards. That's right. Hit that music. There it is. Those are three jokes for the folks. Thank you very much. Is the music still going or am I just making the music? All right, before we get to our first musical guest, let me check in with my fiance, Caitlin. That's right, here she comes. You can follow her on Instagram at Kate C. Parker and later go check out her episode of Running Wild with Bear Grylls that we did. She's going to walk through that door at any time. There she is. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Come on in, have a seat. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Pretty good. How has your day been? Great. It's been great. And what did you do this afternoon? This afternoon? What time does that start? I don't know. That's a good Literally question. Early afternoon, like, like at one? four, five. Oh, I went to a spin class. How'd that go? Around five. It was great. Do, when we spin, and I'm beside you, do you watch how fast I'm going? Do you compare the output that you feel like you're putting out versus mine? Because I feel like you dominate me. I'll be honest. I feel like that as well, but I don't really watch you that much. Well, I watch I you the whole time. I just notice you're not doing the moves. Here, I, don't, don't, I don't do the dance moves because I can't keep up. Right. Here, here's what I've learned about this spin class. Mm -hmm. I put my grind on too hard. Mm -hmm. And when I'm pedaling hard, I can't do the dance moves with my arms mm -hmm. on the right pace. Right. And so as you guys are all nailing them, I'm off. But yeah. I'm, still, I'm still getting a pretty good workout it's in. Sophie's choice there. Mm, how did, interesting analogy. Mm -hmm. How did uh, class go today? It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good instructor. High energy. was packed. Um, I got to ride next to someone I know, which I like. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Did you see Gary LaVox out in the waiting room? I did. Yeah. A and? I waved at him. I had to come in here. I would have loved to stop by and, and chatted for a bit, but um, I just got a quick wave in and had to get right in here for my interview. Do you feel solid about the wave? I think he liked it. He yeah. smiled. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was like, you know, it's awkward because you're like, I think you probably know me who I am. Like, well, yeah, he, we, but we've we, met we several times, out. Yes. but you just never know. So I didn't want to be too like, he hung out at the house I multiple know, no, times I know that, with and his wife. He's a big star. He, he is a big star. Is there anything you want me to ask him when he comes in? Any question? He's a big star. Off he camera. Only, he, you want me to ask him off camera? Yeah. Something. What? I'll text. Why am I gonna ask? I'm on camera. I'll text it to you. Does it have to do with him being naked? No, not okay. no. Uh, last night we watched our episode of Running Wild with Bear Girls. Yeah. Which people can still watch right now at nationalgeographic.com. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about your performance? My performance? Like how I did on camera? Yeah, how you came off. Eh. 
You didn't love it? I mean, I, I just don't like to watch myself, so I, I didn't love it. But I am very proud of myself for doing it. So I think those are two different things. How did I feel about my performance? Meh. How did I feel about what I accomplished? <sighs> what was it like doing that episode? Awful. Scary. Um, cold. Scary. Terrifying. It really wasn't fun, right? No, there wasn't one bit of it that was fun. The only good thing about the actual time there was Bear. Right. Because he is the greatest. Right. In the moment, the only the only good thing was Bear. After it, it's all good. Mm-hmm. It's all fun. It's all a great memory. I mean, Happy pe- we did it. People loved it, though. I, f- I felt like there was a good response. I guess, yeah. I don't you were know. the star of the show, Belle of the Ball. I was not the star of the show. People, Big float in the parade. No. People just see you a lot, and they don't see me a lot, so that's why... I'm sure you're feeling that way. I loved it. Yeah. I, th- I thought it should have just been you. Next season, you go alone. Oh, and I don't want that because you really like Bear. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want to go alone, but I, I'm happy I did it. I'm happy that I stood up to a fear of mine. I was actually, I'll just tell you a little story. Today I was in spin and my instructor was talking about kind of how she started her spin class. And I know this is probably cliche and we all know all know this saying, but she was saying, um, when you feel scared about something, just do it scared. And that's what I want to do from now on. I just want to do it scared regardless of what it is. I don't need to work up courage to do it. I just need to do it scared. And that's what I did the whole time during Bear Girls. Sorry, I got distracted because Mike D was taking a picture and I was like, oh, Mike, do you need me to look at you? Oh, she good? good. Okay. So anyway, for any of you that are actually watching this, Whatever you're thinking that you want to do, but you don't feel like you have the courage and you're like, oh, maybe I'll have the courage in a week. Maybe I'll have the courage in a couple weeks. You won't. So do it scared. That's okay. You don't have to have the courage. Totally. Sometimes you only get courage by fighting through fear. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I like how you just address the camera. (laughs) Just, you just totally take over and you turn right to the camera. I was telling them. Yeah, I know. I liked it. I don't know if it could help anybody. Uh, Mike D has written some questions for me to ask. Uh, Would you like to answer them? Would I? Yeah. Uh, what kind of sleeper is Bobby? Um, a flailer. Uh, elaborate. That kind of a thing. <laughs> I like that. Or like a, sometimes you talk in your sleep. Mm. Or you wake up and you request me to hug you. Sometimes I do that. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I can't go to sleep. Will you hug me? No, he goes like, he goes, Mm-mm-mm. hug me. <laughs> I do. Mike's giggling. <laughs> I do, and then she's big spoon it's and I'm sweet. little spoon. I don't care. I like it's the only way it. I get. The only yeah. way I get to sleep. Yeah. I don't let her put her hand on my stomach though, <laughs> or near my stomach, because <laughs> I'm embarrassed in my stomach. Because he has body dysmorphia, and we're working through that. So she can put her arm over me, but it has to be like up here. Yeah, it's got to be shoulder or like pit. Yes. Yeah. And pit, Never it ends up not with a great smell in the morning on your hand. Uh, what song do you love to sing in the car? Me? Mm-hmm. What song do I love to sing in the car? Um, I'll tell you right now. Got my driver's license last week. No, that's so two months ago. Okay, sorry. So, so right now, well, my staple really is Adore You by Harry Styles. Um, but Olivia Rodrigo actually has a new song out called Good For You, and it's really good. Check it out. Did you ever consider changing your last name to Bones, even on Instagram? Not one time. Okay. And final question, what's the one thing you learned about Bobby in the last week? In the last week? Mike, that's tough. What did I learn about you in the last week? Um, That you are very willing to help me with wedding things such as meetings, if I will just ask you. Yeah, and we went to Crate and Barrel and did some boop boop on the board. You gotta stop saying where we went to register. Sorry about we're, out, we're out of gifts at this point. Like, uh, people oh, have yeah, bought them right. all, and now my parents have nothing to get <laughs> us. So, we need to, like, chill out on the details, bud. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Yeah. I was pretty good at the, uh, at the boo-boops, though, right? By scanning? You were great. Yeah, I, was, I scanned boo-boops. Did you scan you your stuff, Mike? No, I did online. You did register online? Yeah, she yeah. went back and did some registering online, and, and as mm-hmm. soon as we finished... She went right to the registry and Eddie had already bought us a juicer before we even got Eddie drove home. Eddie was so generous. Like the, oh my gosh, wait, time out. Can you send me where you're registered? Like, we don't have a gift for you yet. Okay, I'll send it to you. Because I've asked him to ask you and I know he hasn't and I didn't want to ask Kelsey because I know she has like 9,000 things on her plate. So can you send that? All Thank right. You, Mike. There she is. My fiance and yours. 
Just yours. Just mine. Yeah. Caitlin Parker, everybody. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thank you for always being our first guest. Yeah, you're welcome. Only three more episodes to go. Bye. Three? Yeah, we're doing, it's a six pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We go over in the chat. We got a lot of people over here that are like, uh, uh, is this where Gary LaVox is going to be on? It is, momentarily. That's from Cat McQueen. Um, Kel Zach said, Gary put the wrong URL on Facebook, so people are going to something else. I don't know. All right, here we go. Let's welcome my first guest, well, musical guest. He's the lead singer of Rascal Flats and will soon be releasing his first ever Christian solo album. He has the voice of an angel and the only guy I know who works out in full camouflage. I've seen it with my own eyes. Welcome to the show, Gary LaVox. Thank you. Thank you. What do you what, what's in your hand? I was feeling lonely, but it says I'm not lonely if you're reading this book. That's true. Did, did, you, did you grab it from out there, really? I really did. Oh, nice. Did we sign that for you? Yes, yeah. that's why I brought it. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay. Oh, by the way, Gary brought merch for me. I these did. Are, what, these are, there's a brand, Lavoxware. Yeah, Lavoxware. You broke, really struggling. You need to yeah, I, yeah, I'm just trying to catch make up buck. With, with the bones. Yeah, yeah. That's all. That's yeah, all I'm yeah, trying yeah, to do. Yeah. But these are cool. I, I do love the logo. Thanks. Like, what? who designed this? I did. You did? Yeah, I did, really. Here's Freedom Farms. What's Freedom Farms? That's, that's my farm uh, outside of Nashville. I will, I will wear this black one. Yeah, okay, well, good. I'll I brought them for you. You'll, you'll sell many, and you'll be able to pay your mortgage, that's right. which, which so is the goal. That. You're even wearing a wristband. Now, why a wristband in the evening on an uh, internet talk show? Well, you know what? It just it, I know how you have to turn all the air conditioners off, and it gets hot, and so I, I dap. Okay. You know, because you made me wear makeup and things, and I, so I can dap. I do that. Okay. Um, on to the, the, the real questions at hand here. Okay. Why a solo album, and why, a, why did you start with a Christian album? Why a solo album? Because Joe Don came to us one day and said that he wanted to be home more. Said he was burnt, and he's burnt out. Are you serious? Yeah. And so... That kind of, we were like, okay, all right, we respect that. And so I had already kind of planned on doing one and didn't really know when it was going to happen because, you know, Flats, we've been a 1,000 miles a minute for 20 years. And so when Joe Dawn told us that, we were like, mm, okay, well, that opens it up. And I always wanted to do a gospel record. I always did. And um, it just, all of it kind of came together, and here we go. And then Friday it, uh, it drops. Right of the EP drops. Were you shocked? And I do want to get to the EP because I've heard a lot of it. Heck, you played some unreleased stuff on my house like three months ago. So, yeah, I've, right. so, I, so I've kind of you know been through the process. But were you? Did you expect Joe Don to come and be like, "Hey guys, let, we got to take a break"? No, I, I really didn't. I mean, I you know, I, not really because it was that was year nineteen, and we had a, a lot of things booked for the twenty year and everything else with trying to put the farewell tour together and. We had a lot of things set up with, uh, you know, the Grammys and CMAs and all this kind of to kind of just celebrate the 20 years that we had together, you know, and all the accomplishments that we've done. And then the pandemic hit. So, no, it was kind of out of left field. And, uh, you know, but what can you do? Did you and Jay ever go, hey, we'll just do this as a duo? Was we, it even a conversation? It was a conversation. and But Joe, Jay had started uh, that – that little Christian label, the independent label called Red Street Records, and he wanted to make a go with that. And I was like, well, that's cool. So I was like, you know, I still – I feel like my platform is the stage, and I still have so much music to make. And so I just stayed on my artist route. And, I, I mean, I stick with what you're good at, and that's what I wanted to do. And so, Did you yeah. feel like you needed a break for a bit, though, after this? Were you like, I need to just kind of recalibrate. I did not expect this. I've spent the last 20 years being – a flat. Uh -huh. Did you have any nights where you're like, when, what is about to happen? Or were you like, okay, this actually gives me an opportunity to go chase this solo record. It was both actually. It was kind of, it was sad. It was disheartening. It was exciting. It was, you know, it was kind of everything at once. Cause everything I've known for half of my life is now going to be changed and going to be different. So, but it gave me, you know, it gave me the time to to really lock in and, um, you know, not only did I do a gospel record, but I've already recorded a solo country record that comes out in the fall. So just gave, I kind of just threw myself into my music and just 
let it be. Let you know you got to play the hands that are dealt sometimes. So the record comes out Friday. Yeah, it's called One on One. Why? Why One on One? Well, it's kind of. I think just me doing a gospel record, just me and my 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 faith walk with the Lord, and it's the first time that it's just been me. I mean, I've been the the face of Flats for twenty years, and now it's just one on one, me and him, and me and the fans. So, just kind of made sense. Do you plan to go out and play any of these songs live? Yeah, yeah, I'll be doing all the flat stuff, and that's the question, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to sing the flat stuff? Yeah, I, I think you should. Yeah, I think if I went out, I'd want to hear some of the new stuff. But if I'm going to see, you know, the face of the flats, yeah, dang it, sing the flats. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So what do you do as far as a band? Do you just get your buddies that know the songs? No, it's it's actually the same. It's it's actually all the Rascal Flats band. Jim Riley's my drummer. Travis Toyo plays steel and everything else. He's still with me. And so it's the actual the actual Flats band, just mine is Jay and Jodon. I got a new bass player and um, you know, my keyboard player sings all the high stuff Jodon sang and so it's the same band, just minus Jay and Jodon. I mean, we'd really get the full experience if you kind of dressed them up to look like them. And then we know they're not. But, you know, you still, like, color their hair, you know. Oh, Maybe yeah. even throw them back to old school when, like, Jodon, you know, he had the long. Oh, yeah. I mean. No that, sleeves. Yeah, just, just maybe just a vest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. When you look back, I was looking at some old school pictures of you guys. I mean, you guys were, now it's normal, but style-wise, you were extremely different than the format. Yeah. Were you guys getting a lot of the pushback from the old school Nashville folks at the time? Yeah, I mean, I think every anything new in country, I think you always do. Plus, we came in at the tail end of the whole boy band thing, and so all that kind of played into it. But you know, I mean, we're sitting there like, you know, what we're not we're not cowboys, you know. I mean, we live that lifestyle, you know. I mean, I'm as country as cornbreads, which they is get. crazy because you are. But, I mean, you would. Li- <laughs> Gary legitimately is <laughs> significantly more country, and it's usually the opposite, right? People will come and act a little more, right. show a little more country than they really are. Yeah. It's like you're the, the opposite. Yeah. Like you come out, you're straight ahead, you gel, you put the, your hair product in, you sing, but when we're done here, he's in camo, and he's like, hey, man, come out to the farm. And I'm like, yeah. that's an hour and a half away. <laughs> he's like, no, man, we'll just sit on the porch and like come spit on, at man. cows. <laughs> and I'm like, what's... What, what are you what are you talking about? You're getting the box. So, but you, you do live and you hunt constantly. Yeah. Yeah, hunt. I mean, it's just the way I grew up, but you know, it's it's like there but it's just who I am, you know, just got to be real to who you are and you know, but it's like I've never roped a calf, you know. I saw it. Why well, I'm not going to sit out and put a cowboy hat on and try to play up to something that I'm not, you know. So, I wasn't here in Nashville when you guys broke, mm-hmm. and when you guys were winning the it's Grammys, like mm-hmm. I wasn't here, and I was actually, I mean, probably twenties, yep. and would, would watch on TV and was a fan, and we would start to play. I was working on pop radio too at the time. Yep. We were playing some of your stuff over there, yeah. So I I missed the impact you guys had on Nashville. Mm-hmm. Were you guys king dingling of the town for a while? It, it for yeah, it, we really had just kind of held the torch for. Yeah, I mean, a long time, really. I mean, it's, I mean, 2006, we outsold everybody in the world that put a record out in any genre of music, you know? So, and I remember being at the Grammys up against Beyonce and Mary J. Blige and Kanye and Jay Z, and we were like, it doesn't matter if we win or not. We outsold everybody in this room. That's, a, you can't even fathom that kind of stuff. So, I mean, we had a, you know, I mean, that's made the Guinness Book with, you know, seven consecutive CMA vocal group. Of the, I mean, all that stuff is just mind blowing. We had the, we were kind of top dog there for a minute, for sure. Were you in Entertainer of the Year? No, the, the, never. Which, were. which is crazy to yeah. me, because I was gonna let you answer no because I knew the answer. I looked it up. Yeah. The fact that you weren't allowed, to, or they didn't put you in that when you were the ap- actual entertainers of. Yeah. Not just country music, but you said it. You were out selling everybody. I think even as the success was happening, I still would have had some sort of resentment. Like, hey, why aren't you guys putting us? Because we're, we're not wearing cowboy hats. Is that why? Yeah. I we mean, were upset about it. We were. We thought we, it was well-deserved. I mean, it's like, you know, we're the first band to ever play Wrigley Field. First country concert to ever play Wrigley. I mean, at, at that time, it's like we'd sold out four different tours at Madison Square Garden. And hey, we were doing big stuff. And it was like... 
every year we weren't an entertainer. And it's like, what? How does that even happen? You know, it's like, and then you go and it's like you, you start thinking about that stuff. And then they hand you a plaque for 10 million tickets sold and, you know, all that stuff. It kind of, it sits with you. Not that we weren't, you know, grateful, but, you know, you, you kind of just sit there and scratch your head like, uh, there's not really anything else we can do. Like, I would have been, uh, again, res- I would have resented the people that make those decisions because it's such an inside bubble decision uh-huh. that's being made. And I would think you guys were so successful. And I've seen other this happen to other people in town, too. Yeah. Uh, Sam Hunt, for example. He had yeah. a couple years where he was crushing. Yeah. Not at the level you guys work, but he and he wasn't being nominated for anything. Yeah. And it's like, wow, why are we so out of touch? Why do we have to to... to make it that only a certain type of person that we deem right which removes the power from the people right and i felt like they removed that with you guys yeah man i feel the same way i think like single of the year take the top five singles with the most spins or whatever and that should be your top five you know i mean it seems easy to me but that's not the politics of the game you know and as you guys are achieving superstardom did it ever get to where it was Eagles like, where you're like, we each have our own dressing rooms. We're just coming out, meeting on stage. Or was there, no. was there ever a phase like that? No, you know, the only time there was a phase like that was when uh, it was like we were like, no, because we spent every night on the in dressing rooms together and all that. But it was buses, you know, because it we started having kids and all of that. But that was the only time. But it was like, all right, I'm not picking up your socks. I'm not picking <laughs> up your food. I, we are grown men in this place and we're not doing it so uh, we all got separate buses and everything was great but no we spent every night in the dress room together was there ever because once you start making big money you start flying private from Mm -hmm. shows was there ever one of you guys was like i don't want to spend the flats money on a plane let's take a bus did that ever or or were you all all just like we're just go let's Let's go go. yeah dang let's go what do you get recognized more for the lead singer of the flats or the guy whose face is on the moving trucks (laughs) <laughs> flats for sure. <laughs> flats for sure. Black tie movie. It's funny. I, I I get a lot of people around town and stuff. I get more pictures of p- people like sitting in traffic and something with it says black tie moving my face on there. And they're like, dude, what? But no, flats for sure. Um, a question that I was going to ask, I know the answer to it, because Mike was like, hey, ask him this question, but I'll, I'll also help with the answer. He says, do you ever just show up randomly to a house that your company is working on? <laughs> let me answer Let me answer this one. And I don't know if he does randomly, but I hired Black Tie Moving to move me in here, and I get a call going, hey, man, where are you at? I'm like, I'm at the house. He goes, hey, the truck's over there. I'm about to show up. And he drives up right beside his truck. <laughs> and he came over, and we hung out for like an hour, and he was like, all right. And that was yeah, it. Making sure there's no way broke anything. <laughs> I never hear the end of it. And he was in a white tie. He wore the tuxedo, too. It, it, it was the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned, and we'll get to some music in a second, but I mentioned, and it's a true story. It's my favorite story because it was before I knew you mm-hmm. um, as a person, but we lived in the same neighborhood yeah. and there's a little gym in our neighborhood and I was working out. And when I don't wear my glasses, I can't see anything. And I was doing some cardio and I just, there's some guy that kind of waved at me, but he was in full camo. <laughs> he was on a bike in full camo. And I was like, <laughs> and so I put my glasses on and then full camo, full turkey hunting gear is Gary going. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Are you doing dumbbells? What are you doing? <laughs> Would you, you have an uh, interesting family. I know your daughter, one of your daughter a little bit too. Yeah. Um, would you guys ever do a, you know, a show, a family show like Jay did? Uh, no. No, I don't like, I, I wouldn't want to live with cameras all the time. You know, it's like you. You know, I wouldn't want cameras around me all the time, Bobby. You know, I, how, you know how you take a break and yeah. you don't. You yeah, know you know I mean? me, I take a lot of breaks. Yeah. Um, okay, two things I want to bring up and then we're going to get to the, because the, it's just things that's better to bring up on camera. Um, it was who like one in the morning, maybe like three weeks ago. Yeah. I got a text from you at one in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's like, Hey, get in my clubhouse room. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't get in the cl- your club. I don't even know what you were talking. You're talking about some like foreign money, Bitcoin. <laughs> I thought it would be like, so I, I go, okay. I said, I can't, I'm going to get in trouble. Cause Caitlin's asleep next to me. Yeah. He's like, just get in the room. It's so like, go in your room. And it's like, how to jeopardize Bitcoin's transactional. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is. I thought we were talking about the history of the flats. 
So I get out and I text you the next day and I was like, what were you doing up? You're like, oh man, we were right until like one. We got in clubhouse to like five in the morning. Like you, you go hard, but in a different way now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, because you know, just get motivated. I have nothing to do the next day. So now I can stay up all night. It's not like I have to go to work the next day. My second favorite story just recently happened where I text Gary and I said, Hey, you haven't RSVP to the wedding yet. And Caitlin's kind of on. I've never had a wedding before. Oh, She's yeah, like, Hey, cause apparently we have to pick out what people eat. Oh, yeah, like right. people have to go, Hey, I said, Hey, RSVP to the wedding. And cause you said you were coming. I was like, just make it easy on me. So I don't have to. <laughs> and I send the text and nothing, no, no response. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Gary, we're usually pretty quick with texts with each other. I'm mean, no, no problem. Hey, who knows what you're doing? Right. Yeah. Could probably be like doing some charitable work. <laughs> I don't know. Could, yeah. I look over on Instagram and he's selling hats. <laughs> He's selling Gary LaVox hats. And I'm like, I'm watching you. You can't return a text. You got to make eight bucks selling one of these hats. I'm like, hey, man. Yeah, I'm RSVP. I had to sign. It was weird because I had to sign those hats because we were leaving for Florida in like two hours. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, I just. In the I 15 just seconds of just responding to the text would have totally shifted it I all. No, but I did. Though. I was in, I was in, I was in motion. Mm -hmm. You know how it gets. Mm -hmm. How do we, okay, and these hats here, I'm going to show I'm going to wear this one too, but how do we get this hat? Just go to uh, GaryLavox.com. Yep. And it's got all the shirts and hats and wristband, all, all the Vox wear stuff. I do want to try this. I went to the post office today yeah. to find a phone book because I don't have an a phone actual, book. An actual pages? phone book. Yes. Because you know how they say, ah, Gary can sing the phone book and make it good. You've heard <laughs> that phrase, right? Yeah. I went, there was no phone book. They looked at me like I was stupid. They're like, why do you want a phone book? I was like, well, Gary LaVox is coming to the house. <laughs> I'd like to hear him sing the phone book. And they were like, I'm sorry, we don't have a phone book. However, I had this. Oh, snap. Well, maybe just a couple lines. This is stock investing for dummies. It's the closest thing I had to a phone book. Oh, okay. So maybe open it up, sing us a few lines. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Once you choose a promising sector, just select large cap companies that are financially strong. Nice. Earning a profit. Have a low debt and are market leaders. Oh, oh. this entire oh. book shows you <laughs> how to do just that. Yeah. However, you may not like the idea of buying stocks directly. No, no, no. Don't <laughs> buy stocks directly. There he is. That's great. Fantastic. Which, by the way, I believe that's what I was hearing you talk about in the clubhouse room, singing <laughs> it the same way. Yeah. Hey, let's bring your guys in. All right, let's do it. Uh, you got a, Gary has some players there. Just bring them on in. I was uh, talking with them earlier. What is that instrument with the funny strings? It's a guitar. Yeah, it's a it's a dobro. It's a dobro. Got dobro. it. Sounds like a like like a steel guitar slash a guitar. Start, yeah. It's very loud. The it ones is. that I've seen are very loud. Come on in, guys. Andy Wood, Travis Toy, everybody. Hey, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no. So let me let me say this again because um, this will obviously it's seen now. This is going to be up. We're going to put it up in a lot of places. Your new record, yeah. Your gospel record, yep. one to one, yeah, one on one, one on one, mm -hmm. uh, is out Friday. Friday. How many tracks? Five. So it's an EP. It's an EP. A gospel EP. Yeah. And. The single's out now. Yep. Called The Distance. I saw the video. You're like in a field. Yeah. I was at the farm. I love, a, I love a good field. That, yes. And also, you have to stop telling Caitlin we need to come to the farm because she won't leave me alone about it. I know. She's like, coming. I'm getting No, Kate. no. She's like, she's, Gary, she's like, Gary literally wants us to come. And I'm like, Gary's fancy Hollywood. He just says stuff. No, no. I'm, come on. Okay. What are we going to play here? So we'll play The Distance. We'll play the first single off of it. All right. Here we go. Gary LaVox. You guys check out the record. Let's hear a song. See the road of life we travel Has speed bumps, cracks, and detours When you go left of center Just look up and there's your sign I know you want to quit And the enemy says to give in But I promise with God you can Go the distance, accept the challenge For everybody for you, hope's not lost, it's found on a cross, and all the strength to push on through, you can make it up the mountain, you can throw away your doubting, a little bold and fearless, cause with God, you 
can go the distance. Oh, oh, oh. oh, don't give up. Stand on your faith. Finish the race and break the tie. And go the distance. Accept the challenge for every battle that's before you. Hope's not lost, it's found on the cross And on the strength to push on through You can make it up the mountain You can throw away your doubting A little bold and fearless Cause with God You can go the distance You can go the distance. It's one on one is available Friday, May 21st. You can actually pre order at the link in his Instagram bio. You can follow Gary on Instagram at Gary Lavox. That's his only account because every third post is him going, This is a fake account and pointing out a fake account. <laughs> Most of his feed is just him showing fake accounts. That's right. His <laughs> Get a life, people. <laughs> His new album, One on One's available this Friday. Again, pre-order. Hey, listen, I love you. You know that. All seriousness, you're my you guy. Too, uh, there he is, Gary, Jay, Joe Don. They, uh, they <laughs> <laughs> We're Rascal Flats. Uh, check out the record. I'm excited. And I, listen, I've heard this record. I've heard none of the country record. Yeah. I am excited for you to to be fulfilled by this. Thank you, brother. And then hit us with that country record in the fall. Oh, it's coming. It's That's coming. what I'm talking about. Yeah, All buddy. right, we're going to take a quick break. Gary Lavox, you guys check out the record, and we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. We're back. Uh, Caitlin's back in. Gary's great, huh? Great. Yeah, did you ask him? No, I got nervous. Why'd you get nervous? So we have, we, we we're going to make the band at our wedding learn a song. Gary yeah. would sing it. Gary? <laughs> He's Did gone. You leave? He's gone. Oh. He's still here. <laughs> you called. No, you you said it. Gary. Hey. Hi. Hey. What's, what's up? happening? What's up? Let, let's say let's say we happen to teach the band one of your songs at our wedding and they happen to play it at the reception but the singer happened to be in the bathroom. Right. Who would step up? Shit. <laughs> oh no, that's not. That was not the answer. Oh, I'll do it. Yay! I'll do it. Isn't that hard? Amazing. What he, what song did, did, do you want us to make the band learn? I'm moving on. Oh. 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 Thank you. Oh. I will be here. Oh. No, no you can't do I'm, I'm humiliated. I mean, it's got to be broken road, doesn't it? It doesn't. No, my wish. Broken road. Anything. Yeah. It's your I choice. Let go. No, not that one. No, oh. not that one. Yeah, no, oh not my okay. gosh. Okay, anyway, I did, I did a conversation for another time, but probably my wish, huh? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because you probably do Broken Road all the time. Yeah, Everywhere. we want to be unique. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take me there. Oh, take me there. So, you know what I really like? I see a dust trail following an old red Nova. Baby blue eyes. Yeah, harmonize with me, Gary. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry they called you back, Gary. Wait, baby, don't move. Right there it is. T-shirt hanging on the floor. I remember what Okay, all right, all right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't look a day over fast cars and freedom. Sunset, riverback, first time. Yeah. You know it. Okay. He, of course he knows it. Okay. Both of you. Thank you. Gary, Caitlin, thank you very Are much. All right. You're both out of here. You're both kicked out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I need to bring my next guest in because. Okay. Um, up next, I want to welcome an artist that is destined to be a superstar. Uh, not only is she just awesome, she's our iHeart Country on the verge artist. Her song, Things a Man Ought to Know, is climbing up the country charts right now. She describes her music as country with the flair. She is uh, the best Hannah Montana impersonator that I know. Welcome, Lainey Wilson, everybody. Hi, Lainey. Do you get a chance to meet Gary? Had you met him before? I've Gary? never met Gary Pretty until cool. today. Yeah. Just so normal. Just, well, <laughs> normal is not the word I would use, but it's so approachable and friendly. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I mean, he just sat down on the couch and... We just started talking about a little bit of everything, so. It's interesting to see you 
now becoming the star that I always felt you would be because we met years ago. Yep. I mm -hmm. was watching Blanco Brown's <laughs> Gonna Do the Two Step. And yeah, I, boy, yeah, so I Gotta messaged you. I messaged Lanny on Instagram and was like, hey, because you were doing the, the dance with him. I did it, yeah. And I said, hey, can you teach me this? <laughs> and Lanny's like, yeah, sure. She goes, I mean, I'll come over. I said, hey, we'll put you in a video and we'll, you can teach us. And you said, I'll call Blanco. And I was like, well, that's extremely nice to her because I was saying, hey, you could do it. And you're like, no, we'll do one no, better. No, no, we're going to get the real deal mm -hmm. involved. And then you and Blanco came into the house and then you didn't even, you were like, I don't need to be in the video. And I was like, wow. Oh, heck no. I was like, people who really know it, y'all get after it. I'm just here to kind of help facilitate. But it was, it just showed <laughs> me just how awesome of a person you were. Thank you, man. And that you also knew that your time was coming. That wasn't going to be your time. Yeah. You had your own reason. Waiting. You yeah. know what's funny, too, though? Like, we put that video up on YouTube, and I put so many dang videos of me singing on YouTube. And, of course, I put one of me dancing. The thing goes viral. And I'm like, well, shoot, I should have been dancing the whole time. <laughs> so now to see you, you know, blow up, it's been crazy because we did the, our Raging Idiot show last year. Yep. No, two years. Oh, wow. I mean, because the too. pandemic, we didn't have it. Yep. And you came out and did Fat Bottom Girls by Queen, and, cr and you crushed so hard. <laughs> the crowd, they didn't know you at the time. Yep. But when you were done, they loved you. I couldn't get them to stop clapping. It was wild. That was my first time playing the rhyme. And I mean, I will never forget it. And got up there and, of course, I ain't fat bottom girl. Are you, but I just remember you crushing it so hard that the crowd was like, we don't know her yet, but yep. we think we're going to know her. That's the goal. Every time I get up there, I'm like, they don't know me from Adam. But when I get done with this, they're going to know me. So what's the difference now in the feeling of when you have a song climbing the charts right now? It's so strange. I mean, actually, I was at home in Louisiana not too long ago at Tractor Supply. And uh, this guy came up to me. He was like, are you that girl that sings that song about what a man ought to know? So he recognized you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. You work at Tractor Supply, so I guess you do know a few things a man ought to know. But it's been it's been interesting. It's uh it's just like you like you said a minute ago, I've always just kind of felt like my time was coming. Um, I've never had a plan B. So at some point in time, it's gotta work. And you used so. to drive back and forth and you used to tour, like you would go home. Yeah. Like you'd be here yep. and try to make it, but then yep. you you had to pay the bills, so you would yep. just drive home and play shows down there. Yeah. So I was living in a camper. And I lived in the camper the first three years I was here. And I was living in a studio parking lot. Somebody was just letting me live in their yard, basically. And letting me bum, you know, their water and Wi-Fi. So I didn't have a whole lot of bills, you know. I mean, I had to buy groceries and gas money and stuff like that. So I'd go home to Louisiana or Mississippi and just play as many shows as I could. And just try to make ends meet. Yep. Was there ever a time where you thought, man, I... I just don't know if I can do this, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to do this. What's crazy is no. Like, <laughs> I'm, I have to be a little borderline crazy because there, there were times in my life where I should have packed my stuff and went home. Absolutely. But, um, you know, I've just, I'm a little hard-headed, and I've just kind of always felt like, you know, I mean, this is what I was, I was born to do, and I'm going to figure out one way or another. And I've got really supportive parents, and my daddy's a farmer, and I've seen him, like, get up every single day and just do the dang thing. You know, I mean, like, work his fingers to the bone. And it's his livelihood. And he has bad years, good years. But at the end of the day, like, if you love it, you do it. So. Are they so proud of you? Oh, they're so tickled. I mean, to, for them to turn on their local country station and hear their daughter on yep. the radio. Yep. What, what does that do for them? Well, actually, Daddy was riding the tractor the other day, and um, they just got finished planting corn, and he called me, and it was really a full circle thing for me. It was just wild, because any time I ever wanted to spend time with him, I'd have to go ride the tractor with him, because he was just always at it. So he called me, and I, I don't even remember what I was doing, but he just said, hey, I'm out here, uh, just, you know, I'm on the tractor out in the field, and I just wanted to let you know I just heard you on the countdown. And I was like... Well, now I'm about to school. <laughs> so it was just, you could just hear it in his voice. He don't have to tell me that he's proud of me, but he is. Man, that's so cool. Have you played a show? And I guess you probably haven't played a show back home since, you know, the pandemic. Because nope. really, there hasn't been a lot of shows. Nope. Well, you know, just now, are you starting to go out at all? Have you been out at all to play anything? Yeah, so we've done some stuff out west, Idaho, Wyoming. We've got some stuff. Shoot, where are we going this weekend? And See, that's the best thing. Yeah. 
is when you start you, cause you're, yeah. you're getting some, but when you forget where you're going, cause yeah. you're just like a hundred miles an hour, things are coming yeah. at you. Like, congratulations. Cause when I saw you go, Oh, where are we going? Like, that's the first step and just making it yeah. like, thank God you get to go. Yeah. I'm running so hard and I'm so tired no, that I can't I'm, remember. That's the greatest blessing. I'm so pumped. Like cannot get out there quick enough. I mean, yeah, we're, we're in, uh, Austin and Decatur, Illinois this weekend. And it's just nice to see people. Yeah. The first time you play a show back home, you're going to be just so moved. I mean, you better make me cry right to, hear, for, to have your people <laughs> sing your music back yep. is going to be another milestone yep. for you. Yep. Here and there. Like I've seen like in a few different places, like we played somewhere in Arizona and I saw some people singing a lot of the songs and I mean, I've never seen that. And it did make me feel all warm and fuzzy. And I was like, wow, this is like what you work so hard for, you know, for people to just connect and latch on to something. And I mean, that's a songwriter's dream, you know, so. My hometown, 700 people. Your hometown, Baskin, is 300. Yeah. What? You know how it is. I mean, apparently I live in the big city compared yeah, to Baskin. Do, I mean, do, apparently this, I'm New York City. <laughs> what, 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 we have the Yum Yum shop and a gas station. We don't have any traffic lights. Yeah. What's Baskin like? We have like a gas station and a half, I guess you would. I mean, it's literally like, I don't even know if it's a gas station anymore. We have a caution light, a bunch of cornfields. And that's about it. It's actually called the Village of Baskin. Well, what makes it a village? Heck if I know. Like, I mean, just every time I'm like, I'm from the town of Baskin, my parents correct me. And they're like, no, it's the village of Baskin. That's just what it says on the welcome to the village of Baskin sign. You're going to tour with Jason Aldean. Yes. How did that come to you? Did you hear from him? What happened? It's just so crazy. I know, So we're, you know, we're at the same label. And I know a lot of the people over there have been like sending my music for a while. And, um, and his manager called my manager and said, y'all know that girl y'all been bugging us about for <laughs> two years now? Well, Jason wants her to be on, on the road with him. I was like, what in the world? Now my people back at home really think I'm doing something with my life. <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> Took me that. long enough. <laughs> okay, Lainey, you're going to play a song, couple songs for us? Okay, we bring in yep. some stuff in? Let's do it. All right, you guys, check out uh, Lainey on Instagram while they're getting all, all this up. You can follow right. Lainey on Instagram. It's at Lainey Wilson Music. And you guys, check out her album, Say What I'm Thinking. That's the record. You can go stream Things a Man Ought to Know wherever you listen to music. And she's fantastic. I've been a fan for literally years, and to see her blow up is extremely gratifying for me to see someone that has just been grinding it out and is also so good. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, here, the, here she is, right. Lainey Wilson. So uh, this is about where I'm from. <laughs> when I moved here, I told everybody I was from L.A. They thought I was talking about Hollywood, but I was talking about Louisiana. My name ain't on every list, but they say I'm where the party is. I drive a beamer through the mud Well, I'm kind of redneck Hollywood When you say L.A., I think Louisiana Lower Alabama Stars up in the sky And I ain't been to California Way too far from Georgia But one day Bet there's more of us around From a different name, same small town Gucci lace can dress it up But country is as country does When you say L.A., I think Louisiana Lower Alabama, stars up in the sky When you say L.A., well, I think Louisiana. Don Perry on in Dixie Cups, kind of redneck Hollywood. Joplin meets Naomi Judd, 
kind of redneck. You're so good. You're just so good, and you're loud at the same time, and it's hard to be good and loud. And you do both. Thank you, man. Yeah, Lainey Wilson, you guys, as she retunes, follow her at Lainey Wilson Music. If you see her coming to town, go support her. Buy her merch. you have any merch up right now? Oh, yeah. We got all kind of merch. Where? On my website, LaineyWilson.com. Check how it you out. Can, that's how you can support a new artist. Like, Please. On, yeah, honest to God, that's that's it. People are like, how do I support a new artist? Sure, you can stream the songs, but by help help out, buy them cool merch that she has so um also subscribe to this channel control music if you guys see it hit subscribe come they have so much good stuff on this channel so um we we tu- i was just vamping basically we tuned up get ready to go I'm ready to all roll. right tell us what we got here we're gonna play the single by the way this yes. is this is my right hand man aslan makes me sound good um so this is gonna be golly i'm i'm just so proud of of this song how it's connecting to people and People are latching on to it, and I mean, this song ain't about changing a tire or starting a fire. I mean, you can YouTube all that. At the end of the day, this song is just about treating people right. It's about having good character, something that my parents really tried to teach me, and uh, staying firm on, so it's something that every single one of us ought to know. Here's things a man ought to know. I can hook a trailer on a two-inch hitch I can shoot a shotgun, I can catch a fish And I can change a tire on the side of a road Yeah, I know a few things a man ought to know So good. Lainey Wilson, just A+. Plus. Man, just love everything about you. Your, Thank you, man. Your, your, your voice, and not just your singing voice, like what you stand for. Thank you. And your style, and so just it's just so cool you. to see you make that, make that next jump. Dude, thank you for believing in me. I love to see you tired. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. Like, that's, the, like, that, that's the greatest. You should be. Yep. You should be they should be running no, you so are, hard. they're running me ragged. Camp, yep. Excited. I'm okay with it. Yeah, of course. Let's do it. You'll, you'll get your own mental health, health time soon enough. But right now, you're all good. All right. There is uh, Lainey Wilson. You guys, get some merch. You can help her out. Just get a shirt off her website. Right. LaineyWilson.com. That's it. Really helps the new artists. Um, and that's it. That's our show. And so thank you guys. Thanks to Twitch, Control Music, and all of our crew here to help put the show on. But most importantly, thanks to you guys for watching and spending your Tuesday night with me. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're right here with me. And I appreciate that. So I'll leave you with this piece of wisdom that... You know, I've talked about forever. You know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. If you haven't done it already, well, the second best time is now. And what does that mean? It means that if you want success in life, you got to act right now. Mm-hmm. You can't get better at something if you're not putting, putting effort in and trying. Listen, I failed time after time. was rejected by everybody. Radio stations, book publishers, TV stations, on and on and on. I had to beg Lainey just to come do the show. She yeah. rejected me nine yeah. times to even be here today. So if you feel like the world... <laughs> is passing you by and that you can't keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians or the TikTok stars or whoever that Gen Z looks up to these days, it is never too late to get started and try. You can be someone they look up to. You can change the narrative. Have a great night. I'll see you next time here on the show that we call On Time with Bobby Bones. Don't forget, be excellent to each other. Party on. Good night, everybody. Hey, guys, it's Bobby Bones. Welcome to the channel. 
If you're new to the channel, subscribe and then go check it out. A lot of artists, a lot of songwriters, a lot of music. Welcome to the Bobby Cash channel.